In this lecture, you'll learn about iSCSI, which is a popular SAN protocol which runs over Ethernet networks. iSCSI stands for the Internet Small Computer System Interface Protocol. It runs over Ethernet networks and was originally viewed as a less expensive alternative to Fibre Channel. So back in the early days of SAN, Fibre Channel was expensive because it requires its own dedicated infrastructure and its separate hardware types as well. So iSCSI was developed to be a less expensive alternative running over standard Ethernet networks. It does, however, have higher packet overhead than and has traditionally been seen as having lower reliability and performance than Fibre Channel. However, it is a very mature and popular SAN technology. As it runs over Ethernet rather than Fibre Channel, it can share the data network or have its own dedicated network infrastructure. TOE is a, a TOE card, stands for TCP Offload Engine. That's a specialist adapter which can be used to offload the storage TCP IP processing from a server's CPU. So it improves performance. Those are sometimes called iSCSI HBAs. So they're normal Ethernet network cards, but they're optimized for iSCSI traffic. So let's look at the different options we have for the network when using iSCSI. Because it's using standard Ethernet, we can use the same shared network as we're using for our normal data traffic. So you see the example here, we've got the server one down in the bottom left corner here. It's the initiator, it's a SAN client. We've got its storage system is available over the Ethernet network and it's the same Ethernet network that we're using to connect to our clients as well. So everything using the same shared network. You can do that. Another way you can do it is by having a separate dedicated network, just like you would with Fibre Channel, but rather than the storage network running over Fibre Channel infrastructure, it runs over Ethernet infrastructure. Back in the earlier days when we had lower bandwidth network cards, like one gigabit Ethernet and below, then this would probably be a good idea because you would be pushing it to run both your data and your storage traffic over a low bandwidth network card in the server. So you can see here it looks very similar to what we had with Fibre Channel where the server is connected to its client over the normal Ethernet network and we've got a separate physical Ethernet network that's connecting it to its storage for performance and reliability reasons. We do have faster network cards now though so that makes it a lot more feasible to run iSCSI over a shared network so you can see in the example here we've got the server in the bottom left again the client up at the top so let's first look at the data network so that runs over our network infrastructure there and that traffic is going to be segregated into a data vlan then when we add storage to the system this is running over the same switches our storage traffic is going over the same shared physical infrastructure and we're going to put that in a separate storage vlan so tying everything together using the same shared infrastructure we can use the same or separate network cards on the server and we have the data and the storage traffic split into different vlans again for performance and security reasons okay let's look at how iSCSI works so you saw in the earlier lectures that fiber channel uses wwpns to identify the initiators and the target iSCSI is also a SAN protocol, so it shares a lot of the same characteristics as Fibre Channel. That's why I went into quite a lot of depth on Fibre Channel earlier to give you a really good understanding of that. When you understand Fibre Channel, you can bring the same knowledge to aid in your understanding of iSCSI too, because they're very, very similar. So Fibre Channel uses its worldwide names iSCSI uses IQNs for the addressing. IQN stands for iSCSI Qualified Names. You can alternatively use the EUI, Extended U Unique Identifier. Those are both two alternative ways of doing the addressing in iSCSI. IQN is used more commonly. 
The IQN can be up to 255 characters long, and it has the format that you see on the slide here. So IQN and then a dot, and then the date, and then the naming authority, and then a unique name for that particular host. So for example, IQN.1991-05.com.microsoft colon test host and the test host would be the name of the host don't worry if you look at an iqn and you see a really old date on there it's because these this format was assigned way back in the day when the vendors first started supporting iqns so it's typical to see an old date on there the iqn is assigned to the host as a whole similar to the worldwide node name rather than port name in fiber channel iSCSI runs over standard Ethernet, so individual ports in the host are addressed by IP addresses, as you would expect with a normal Ethernet network. There are some differences between iSCSI and Fiber Channel in the way that they operate. iSCSI does not support Fiber Channel's floggy, ploggy, and process login process so an administrator must explicitly point the initiator at its target by specifying one of the ip addresses in the target portal group you remember from when we covered fiber channel that the initiator will automatically discover and connect to the target without you needing to configure anything on the initiator on the server that's not possible with iSCSI though so with iSCSI when you configure the initiator you have to point it at its storage. Once you've done that, it will then discover the target that the storage system's IQN and the other ports in the TPG. So say you've got a storage system with four IP addresses on there. When you do the initial setup of your server, you point it at one of those IP addresses. It will then discover the storage system and it will discover the, four, the three other IP addresses as well. Multipathing software on the initiator can then choose which path or paths to take. So again, from that example, you point it at one IP address, it connects to the storage system. Again, it's a SAN protocol, so there's a lot of intelligence in the client. The client will automatically learn all of the different IP addresses it can use to connect with, and you can use a Lua, it can learn which is the optimized, the non-optimized paths, and then it can either do active standby or active active load balancing over multiple paths to get to its storage system. So although it runs over Ethernet, iSCSI is still a SAN protocol with that multipathing intelligence on the initiator. For the security, we still have LUN masking on the storage system. So LUN masking is configured in the same way as it is in Fiber Channel. The only difference is that we identify the initiator by an IQN rather than a WWPN. Zoning, however, is not supported in iSCSI. We have zoning in Fiber Channel because we have dedicated Fiber Channel switches. For iSCSI, you just use standard Ethernet switches, and zoning is not part of the Ethernet standard. So we need other ways to implement security. Password-based authentication is typically configured on the initiator and the target with matching passwords, and that guards against spoofing attacks. So it prevents somebody who's not meant to from attaching to that particular client's LUN. You can also use end-to-end -end IPsec encryption if you want to encrypt the traffic. So that way, if somebody's sniffing it, they're not going to be able to see what it says. Okay, so that was iSCSI. We'll do a lab demo next, but let's do a quick summary of some of the information about our SAN protocols before we get on to that. So looking at the different adapter types. NIC is a network interface adapter that is a standard traditional Ethernet network card, and that is used for NAS protocols and for iSCSI. So all our protocols that run over Ethernet. TOE is a TCP offload engine card. It's used to offload the storage TCP IP processing from a server's CPU onto the card. It can enhance performance for NAS protocols and iSCSI. Again, it's an Ethernet card. HBA is a host bus adapter. That's the fiber channel equivalent of a NIC. And iSCSI HBA is a tow card. So iSCSI HBA is just a or tow card, two different ways of explaining the same thing. 
when it's iSCSI HBA, it's optimized specifically for iSCSI. CNA is a converged network adapter. It's a 10 gigabit Ethernet card, which supports all of those extensions required for FCOE. And UTA is a universal target adapter. That's NetApp's proprietary card, which supports FCOE or fiber channel. So if a UTA, you can configure it either as a fiber channel card or as an Ethernet card with support for FCOE. And the last thing is let's have a look at the SAN protocol stack for the different protocols. So you can see fiber channel is over here on the left, then FCOE and then iSCSI. They all used SCSI for the as the protocol for the low level reads and writes to disk. Then how are those SCSI reads and writes going to get transported over the network? Well, when we're using fiber channel, it uses FCP, the fiber channel protocol, and that runs over a fiber channel network. FCOE, you see, it uses FCP as well, exactly the same. So it works exactly the same way as FCP does. The only difference is we then encapsulate that in FCOE. We give it an Ethernet header so it can run over an Ethernet rather than a fiber channel network. So that runs over Ethernet networks. And finally, we have iSCSI, separate protocol. It does not use FCP. It uses iSCSI instead to encapsulate the SCSI reads and writes. That then uses TCP, IP, runs over an Ethernet network. Okay, that was everything I needed to cover there. I'll see you in the next lecture for an iSCSI lab demo.